Hello, I'm Olivia and welcome to Olivia's Catastrophe. Today I'm here to give you a book review of Underground Railroad by Colson Whitehead. Now, this novel is an adult fiction book which is about Cora, a slave, and in this book, the Underground Railroad, which was in the past a metaphor for underground tunnels that helped runaways escape from slavery. This one is where the Underground Railroad is actually a true railroad that's an underground system to help runaways run away and Cora takes this and she travels along to different parts of the states and it's all about what she experiences while she's running away and how that affects her and the people that she meets. So I didn't know anything about this book when I got it. I only read it because a librarian who is my favourite librarian, probably one of the only people whose recommendations I actually read hands down, no questions asked, told me that I would like this book. This is actually her book. She let me lend it. And I just said, okay, I'm, I'm going to read it. I read this, the synopsis and then I started to read it. And it's also a Pulitzer Prize winner. I don't know which year, but it did win the Pulitzer Prize. So it's a renowned fiction book. And on one hand, I think it was beautifully written. The author definitely knows what he is doing. He knows how to use words in a way to bring across their meaning, to bring across a deeper, more hidden meaning that you have to think about, that you can analyse this text to really see all the layers and thoughts that he has about slavery. He crosses different themes. What does it mean to be trapped? What does it mean to be free? What do those words even mean? And can you be free and still feel trapped? Also, is your past something that defines you, something that will always hold you back, or is it something that you can move on from, move away from? It also, of course, centres on slavery. We've got, we see Cora's life before she's free, we see Cora's life as a runaway, we see Cora's life in different stages. It transforms and shifts from slavery to free, to enslaved again. And you get to see this also in the other characters and what slavery has done to their minds, what slavery has done to their bodies. You see the different way that slavery is put into action across the different states. And it really, really makes you think about slavery and how horrendous it is. This book does have explicit scenes, but I mean, it's when he's not afraid to show you how terrible and devastating and cruel slavery truly is. We hear about some horrible things that are done to people in the name of this slave disobeyed me, or this slave spilled wine on my sleeve, and things like that, and it just really hurt my heart. It wasn't an enjoyable book to read for that reason. I don't think you can read this book and be like, oh, this is a fun book. You can't, because it's not written like that, and it's not made for that, and that's not the way it's supposed to be read. But really, his writing is amazing. He does a good job of showing us different concepts within the novel. But yet, at the same time, his writing is missing a key element, and that would have to be emotion. When I read books, I want to feel the emotion that the characters are getting, and I think this book in particular, when it's dealing with such heavy themes, would have been so much more effective if it was just as emotional, just as heavy as this book could be. When I was reading from Cora's point of view, I kept felt I kept feeling like there was a distance between me and Cora, between what she was seeing, what she was saying, because for some reason Cora, in my mind, she seemed to have no not like no reaction. We got to see her physical, her outward reaction, but her inner emotional reaction, I wasn't feeling that from her. And that's what I wanted to feel to read this one and to read it as a complete experience of the horrifics of the history. But we don't get that. So it was really, really missing that emotional connection that would have made this book something, something great. Something that I would have said is worthy of the police surprise. Not saying that this book isn't worthy of it, but saying that it would have made it one step further and made it a very, very good book. I did find a lot of interest in how we went from different station to different station, saw slavery across the world, saw different characters and how they dealt with slavery and what their reactions were, but it also has perspectives of slave captures, for example, so we can see what's going through their mind, how they became the way that they are and how they have such strong beliefs that slavery is bad. We get to see that, but we also get to see the people who are helping the slaves. Some people are helping the slaves because they believe that's the right thing to do, but then there are those that are helping the slaves because they feel like there's nothing else. They don't want to do it, but they kind of have to, and you get to see how those people are feeling as well, and how much Cora depends on them, and also horrors that can happen to people who are just helping slaves along, because there were horrific things that happened to people that supported slavery, who were not black themselves, who were not enslaved, but they were just as trapped as the slaves were when they get caught or when something goes wrong, for example. 
The truth has to be told that this in this book there's Cora's mother, Mabel, and Mabel is the one who ran away before Cora and left her daughter behind on the slave plantation. And some people wonder, like, how could you do that to your daughter? Some people, well, Cora especially wonders, how could she do this to me? Also, Cora wonders, where is she? Where does she go? So, for some reason, I felt more of an emotional connection to Mabel than I did to Cora. And Mabel's not actually featured in the book. She's always talked about. And because of that connection, that was why the ending of this book hit me quite hard. For some people, the ending might not be satisfying. It's not exactly a closed ending. It's not exactly an open ending, but it's an ending. And I think even though people might not be satisfied with it, I think it suited this book because when it comes to life, do we get a closed ending? Do we get an open ending? No, it just, it kind of just goes on. So basically we're joining Cora for a ride in her life and then we leave. Oh my gosh, that was like trains, which is kind of, you see, you see what I did there unintentionally. But all in all, this was a very good book. I think it really does display the horrors of slavery and it does a good job of combining fictional elements with realistic elements and I just wanted the emotional connection that wasn't there. But the author's writing is also really beautiful. I have to say that I'd rather recommend 12 Years a Slave when it comes to sharing the story of slavery, mostly because it's a true story and I was feeling the emotion and that one just hurt my soul. But this one is also a good alternative and a decent read too. Thank you so much for watching this review. Please hit the thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Please let me know in the comment section below what stories of slavery will always be in your mind, in your memory that really affected you. Hit that subscribe button if you want to see more. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified every time I have a new video. And I'll see you when I have my next video out. Goodbye.